morning. It's Friday, July the 10th. It's Jeremy. I'm just down at Toronto Harbour Front. I'm at Trillium Park. I'm just looking uh, downtown Toronto. Over there we have the location where we took the Sexton sites on Monday, the July the 6th. We took four sites and averaged them. And uh, today what we're going to do is we're going to look at HO, which is the observed altitude. So it's the Sexton altitude plus the Sexton corrections and dip, which give us HA. And then we're going to take into account refraction and parallax and semi-diameter, and that'll give us HO. Okay, so today what we want to do is we want to talk about HO, the observed altitude. And as I open my laptop here, I notice that uh, I have a Kindle book open here. It's a bit of trivia. This is a, um, a book about a Scottish settlement in the Panama area in 1690. Who would believe that? So if you hear... Gaelic in Antiochia, you all know where it came from. Let's look at uh, chapter 4. Um, on Monday, we took uh, four sextant altitudes, HS, and we calculated an average. And then on Wednesday, what we did is we calculated HA, which is the apparent altitude. So what this is, it's the sextant altitude with correction. So if there was a manufacturing error, in the sextant, you would add or subtract that. The index error is the error you get when you zero the sextant, and we had one minute on the limb, so we had to subtract that. And the dip error, the dip error is caused by your height of eye above the horizon. If you were right at the horizon, you wouldn't have a dip error, but since you're standing above the horizon, the horizon appears to be a bit deeper than it would be normally, so you have a dip error. We measured about 2.5 to 3 meters, and I'll take that as 3 meters, uh, because when I was looking back through my records, I discovered that I've been using three meters at that particular location for the last couple of years. So we'll go to three meters. Um, so now today what we want to do is we want to talk about HO. Now when we take our sextant reading and we apply all the errors and corrections, at the end of the day we get HO, which is the observed value. And what this is, it's the analogy to HC. HC is the theoretical angle that a celestial body would make with a horizon at the point where you are at a particular point in time. So if your sextant measurement is perfect, and you've adjusted for all the errors, etc., at the end of the day, HO should be equal to HC. Um, so that's what we're gonna try to strive for. Now, we've got HA, okay? So the next step is to get HO, so we have to do some further corrections. So the first correction we have to make for is refraction. Refraction occurs because light bends in the atmosphere. As you go up in the atmosphere, it's less dense. And it's more dense close to the Earth. So beams of light, just like radio waves, tend to bend. So when you see a star or celestial body at a particular altitude, its real altitude is slightly lower because of refraction. The light is bent. The other thing we have to compensate for when we're looking at, say, the moon is parallax. And the reason for that is that the angle you measure, let's say, from the moon to the horizon is smaller than it would be at the center of the Earth because the moon is actually much closer to the Earth than the sun. The sun is infinitely far away from the, from the Earth, so the angle at the center and the angle of the surface that you measure would be the same. The other correction we have to make is for semi-diameter. So uh, our measurements we made on Monday was for a lower limb. So the theoretical... Um, angle that the celestial body would make with the horizon HC is calculated by astronomers for the center of the body. So we have to um, adjust our measurement to make it for the center of the body. Now we took a lower limb reading, so we'll have to add the semi-diameter. If we took an upper limb reading, we have to subtract the semi-diameter. So let's quickly look at a diagram for, there's a diagram for dip. Here's a diagram for refraction. So this is what's happening for refraction. Here's where we see a particular celestial body, the sun or a star. We see it there, but it's actually down here uh, because the light bends. So the light from the star bends up, um, so it appears higher than it is. So we have to subtract R from our sextant uh, apparent altitude. And the, and here's the formula. The formula I've taken right out of the nautical almanac. Okay, so there's the formula in degrees and there's the formula in minutes. There is a temperature a correction which you have to make uh, and also for atmospheric pressure. So if you know the atmospheric pressure and the temperature, that's the 
correction factor there. And then finally, let's look at parallax. Here's parallax, and I'm showing it for the moon. The sun is infinitely far away, so we don't really worry about it too much. But here's the moon. So let's say you're standing right here, and the moon appears to be um, the angle from the horizon to the moon is zero. But notice at the center of the Earth, uh, there's the angle here. That's called the horizontal parallax. So there is an angle at the center of the Earth. Now, if the moon was infinitely far away, then this would be zero, and that would be zero. But that's not. It's closer to the, the Earth. So therefore, let's say we're here now. This is the angle we measure between the horizon and the moon. The angle at the center, which is what's calculated by astronomers, it's bigger than this. So we have to add the parallax. All right, so we've looked at that then. So let's go to um, the spreadsheet here. This was the spreadsheet we looked at on Wednesday. And these are the corrections we made from HS. There's my average reading, 63 degrees, 32.5 minutes. Okay, I subtracted one minute for the index error and we subtracted three minutes for the dip. So we get uh, 63.28.25 or 63.4708 degrees. That's HA. And now let's go to the spreadsheet here. Now in this spreadsheet here, we'll look at again on, in our next post when we calculate HC. But what I've done here is I've calculated HO. So HA we know is 63 degrees, 28.25 minutes. So now we're going to subtract the refraction, add the semi-diameter, and add HP, uh, the horizontal parallax. We have none in this case because we're measuring the sun. Okay, so the refraction, I've got a Scilab script that calculates the refraction. So let's quickly look at that. Okay, so there's the formula from the nautical almanac in there. And um, there's my HA, 63.5 degrees. It's actually 63.485 or something like that, but that's close enough, 63.5 degrees. So my um, refraction turns out to be at zero, about 0 0.5 minutes. Okay, so there's my refraction. So I've got 63.28.25 minus 0 0.5. The semi-diameter we get from the nautical almanac. So if you look at the nautical almanac, or July the 6th, the semi-diameter is 15.7. Um, so when we put that in there, uh, the parallax is zero for the sun. So we end up with 63 degrees, 43.45 minutes, or 63.724 degrees. That's HO. Uh, in our next post, we're going to look at HC, and we can look at it right now. It turns out that HC is 63.69 degrees. So we see that there's a difference between HO and HC. Now, I said, as I said before, if our sextant was perfect and our measurement was perfect and everything was perfect, H, HO should turn out to be the same as HC. But in this particular case, there's a slight difference because of probably measurement error. And we'll talk about it in the next post as well. I did an averaging of the results which probably wasn't all that a uh, good idea because we're close to the maximum of the sun. So it's not, the sun's altitude is not linear. It's starting to, it's starting to um, turn, the curve is, is flattening out there. So probably averaging was not such a good idea. Anyways, our next post, we'll look at HC. So what we've done then is we've taken HC, uh, HS and we've reduced it to HO and that's the value we got.